Welcome to Lingo Musica, where music is the universal language. I'm Joe Kendrick, today at AMR Media Studios in Asheville, North Carolina, with Aluchatistas. We've got Ryan Oslentz, Shane Perlowin. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. It's great to have you, and Aluchatistas, a duo now, had been a trio in the past, have been around since about 2002. A lot's going on in 2012 for your band as you've got a new record coming up. Can you tell us about that? Well, we've been working on it <clears throat> for a few years, just developing the material, and we finally got off of a huge tour and felt ready to document it. Yeah, it, it really, um, you know, we composed it in uh, a, a bunch of the music in early 2009, and then and, and toured um, pretty extensively on, on the material, performing it, evolving it, constantly changing it, you know, making adjustments and editing and trying to, you know, set the quality control filter on high. And, and, and so when we finally, uh, uh, when the, it was the new year, you know, uh, we, we really felt that, you know, we, we could play this stuff and, and record it and really get, get the takes that we wanted to with minimal production and editing so we can perform this music in a very effortless manner and it took it really took all of those those two years of touring and performing and, and and fine-tuning to to get to that point to where we had that kind of organic chemistry and uh and also t you know tightness and, and just interplay well speaking of touring you had a pretty successful round of shows in europe over the last few months of last year mm -hmm. how did that go great I met Shane. He was over there for a month doing a solo tour, and then we did two more months. So it turned out to be a pretty epic trip. Yeah, it was but yeah. fun, very fun. That's a long time to be on the road. I think you know, but it, I mean, it was it was really, um, you know, uh, kind of life changing in a lot of ways. Just to, to be out for for that long. I know that like you know professional bands that tour probably, you know, eight, nine, ten months out of the year, but I've never, I don't think that, you know, I don't know if that's a lifestyle that I really want. I like to be at home, and so it was interesting to be traveling for three months and be completely removed from the day-to-day -day and, and really, you know, and then and then the shows were just, you know, really wonderful. Um, and, and then to have Courtney along. Was yeah, really and Courtney, Courtney Chapel, my wife, was, was, was with us the whole time, and, and so it was a, we had the three of us were uh, riding the trains and, and, and you know, um, make covering yeah. many many kilometers. <laughs> yeah, make, making concerts and uh, making friends and, and and you know it was just uh, it was a, a unique experience to be able to do that and to have and to have her along was really really great. It seems like you got a pretty warm reception over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something about the European travel that's pretty unique is. We play on different instruments, at, or I play on a different instrument every night, and all I carry, we travel by train, I carry cymbals around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's an Iron Man challenge. Yeah, honestly. it's like a backpacking Iron Man challenge. All right, so speaking of Europe, I saw one of the documentary videos with some concert footage, and you guys were kind of interviewing yourself. Uh, tell me about some of those experiences of going to the Czech Republic and, you know, playing in the round and, and, and some of the things you got into over there. That was a museum, and that was the first show they had had there. It was in Brno, and uh, the people who organized the concert set it up where we played in the middle of this giant room, completely empty, and just everyone surrounded us, and we just, we were performing our new music for, that was our first European tour as a duo. That's right, yeah. It was spring, and 2010, spring, 20, yeah, and um, yeah, we did the, our helicopter, which is the kind of like a sound experiment on um, staying in one place for a really long time, and just like a moment of just, like a yeah. wall of sound. Yeah, it's just, just a sustained uh, musical moment, you know, sustained tension, you know, and uh, but very. Um, kind of sonically overwhelming and, and very physical. I think you know, in terms of you know the vibrating air molecules hitting people's bodies and eardrums, and, and it really has a 
kind of a almost a trance like effect, you know. And it really, we've done it upwards of like 20, 24 minutes, you know, like straight, where we that's like ended a concert with that. And it was just this kind of really, uh, really lose track yeah, of time. Yeah, just yeah, lose track of time completely. People have said that at the concerts. Just, they thought it was like you know went on for two minutes, but it was twenty minutes. You know, it was just this kind of really kind of you know rhythmic and you know the, the kind of the ultimate in repetition in a way because it's just like a strobing effect. Just, you know, we still do it sometimes. You know. It's not really uh, wary of like, it's so fresh. Yeah, that wa- wary of it becoming like a, like a gimmick or something. You know what I mean? It's like, but it is. But but it's. But in a sense, it's so meditative that it's hard for it to become become that. You know, to do it is just. You know, we did it at our last concert, but I don't think we did it at our previous twenty. You know, but it's something that's in our our bag of tricks. You know, there's all that romance of traveling around Europe by train and going to places you've never been or you speak a different language. Yeah, I mean, and learning all the different train systems and <laughs> playing on yeah. different equipment every night. And yeah, we've got, become expert uh, train navigators. It's kind of incredible. Uh, we were, the last tour was just, we show up at the train station like five minutes before a train leaves, just without any stress and without any, we're never in a hurry. We know if you miss a train, there's always another train. Just kind of figuring out how to navigate it. It's a very... The skill set that's evolved from doing it this way for years now, and so enjoyable, and, and it's beautiful because you know you can, you know, I mean, you're looking out the window, and then, you know, and some trains nice. you can roll the window down if the weather is nice, which is great, and um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's just a, a great way to travel, and um, you can cover some incredible distances even if you don't. I mean, we try not to, but sometimes you'll be trekking from Dresden to Torino, or you know, just like. A twelve-hour, like fifteen change, you know, like in the middle of the night. You're not, you know, you're like. There's been some pretty sleepy. Pretty, you know, I mean, have to catch another train. And some wait. pretty harried commutes that uh, were real, just uh, endurance and uh, testers. You know, really, like I mean, just will break you. You know, like 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 if you're in a war or something. Trying Carrying to get from symbols and suitcases. I mean, because we have a heavy, because we have heavy loads. You know, we have some gear with us, and we have, uh, you know, we have to get there. But you know, to make the concert, we've kind of also just like kind of foregone this, the idea of a sound check. We've kind of thrown that out. Like people want you at their venue at six o'clock, but it's kind of like Same. we need to sleep, you know. And we're playing, we're staying up late, and so we try to catch the, the latest train possible to show up you know when we actually need to be there because we know how to it's it's not rocket science we're two guys you know and we know how to make ourselves sound good within 20 minutes of setting up and you just throw some mics on and we're ready to go so we really try to not you know kill ourselves with like getting up early and making these commutes when uh you know when we haven't had enough sleep so we usually cut we're always cutting it kind of close but that's kind of the part of the part of the thrill of it maybe and and we've gone back so many times that it's just like going home to certain places and then we expand our area that we play every year. So, Well, speaking of home, you live in Asheville. You've been here all along since you've been a band. How did you come to, to call Asheville home? It seems like from the surface maybe your music might be something that would be from New York or Chicago <laughs> maybe. It's... It's pretty heady stuff, and and you're here in the South. And um, how did that come to be? I uh, I moved here in 2001, the summer of 2001, with Courtney, um, and uh, uh, from Florida. And uh, you know, we just we had a friend that that moved here, and uh, we came and visited her. And we were just kind of looking for a change in in in, in scenery and uh, and in, and in community, sure, in, probably in <laughs> culture and community. <clears throat> And to be able to, you know, and it just seemed like the, the arts and the and the and the, and the political kind of like scene and the and the and, and the music scene and and, and just the, you know, the weather and all the things that people move to Asheville for probably you know, it's a very popular place yeah. for people to move to. But you know, we ended up, you know, uh, coming in two thousand one and just kind of put down roots. You know, it feels it really feels like home whenever. Uh, we come back here, you know, go away and then come back. I always feel like, oh, this is great. You know, it's like, well, I'm happy to be coming home. When you talk to people in other cities about their music scene, you can realize pretty quickly how Asheville has some real key advantages. Yeah, we're lucky. 
you know, with a walkable downtown, with right, yeah. bands who have fans that sort of cross pollinate, mm-hmm. and that, musicians that, all support each other. Yeah, and you guys do a lot of other solo stuff or other other projects and things too, mm-hmm. and that kind of goes hand in hand with what everybody's doing in this town. So. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the other things that you've got coming up. You've got the record coming up. I know you've got uh, sort of constant shows coming up in and around the region. What else is on the horizon for all the Luchatistas? We have actually an, a second record that has been we've been working on for a lot longer that will come out. We don't know when, but... Someday, maybe 2013. And, uh, so that's... We still have to finish that one. You've got your own label now called Open Letter. You had been right. uh, putting out Aluchatisa's music on Sadiq mm-hmm. and Cuneiform. Right. How is it with your, your own label? And you've also got a music series that you're curating too, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's the, the Open Letter uh, Open Letter Records is a label that I started just to kind of get get, get recordings out. So we put out an Aluchatisa's record and also my project uh, Doom Ribbons. And then, uh, and then, Two solo records, one of which uh, Ryan plays drums on a couple tracks, and uh, and uh, and then um, and so it's just a, you know a way to kind of get get the, get the music out there, and also to kind of have just a direct correspondence with people that are you know pick, that are purchasing it or that are you know picking up the record, the recording out about it. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's catching on, especially the music series too. Yeah, and so the music series kind of was kind of going before that, certainly because like I was I had uh, just been. Um, booking shows in Asheville for music that I want, I really you know wanted to support and wanted to hear, um, which started mainly with you know avant-garde uh, improvised music and, and jazz-based music from the Chicago um, uh, new music scene, and uh, so I started with that, and um, you know I made some friends through that, and ended up kind of being becoming part of a network, just you know like a, like a national network that's of you know touring uh, spots. Where, where um, just like back in the day of, of like you know uh, like Duke Ellington on tour or whatever, there's always these like support systems in different cities, you know, or you know for like the like in the early you know jazz scene or whatever. Um, not necessarily popular music, but creative music that deserves an audience that's you know push you know pushing boundaries or that's or, or that has just had a, a lot of effort put into it that to, and a lot of creativity and a lot of you know years of, of quality and. And, 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 you know, and, uh, focus and work that's kind of produced something really special. And, you know, so I try to, you know, support people that are, that are doing that. Um, and, uh, so we've been really lucky to have so many incredible performances yeah. from these people. So that kind of had a life of its own. And then I just kind of, I kind of just sort of branded it, you know, with the open letter, uh, uh, name because you know and because I was doing doing the label and just to kind of also establish a continuity um, for the concert series because a lot of the music that I book occasionally we'll get someone who's got kind of a bigger name and, and, and that's going to you know do do well but then there's a lot of you know younger and new artists that are or, or a younger generation of, of, of musicians that aren't going to people aren't going to know what it is but maybe they you know can will come out and check it out because they you know it's kind of a form of advocacy or whatever, you know, that, that this is going to be really cool and new and interesting. And if you're an adventurous listener, then you might want to check this out, you know, because we'll have an adventure. <laughs> yeah. Well, adventure does seem to describe the, the feel of, of a Luchatisa's music pretty well. And speaking of adventure, Brian, you just got back from a little adventure down in South America. Yep. Yeah, that was incredible backpacking trip. With the family, going through Ecuador and Peru, and just seeing so much amazing culture. So got to hike up on Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu, yeah, through many ancient Incan cities, and so that's what you do most of the time that you're not making music. I do quite a bit of backpacking, and even that's one great reason to live in Asheville is surrounded by opportunities to get out but I love traveling too I've been all over well we look forward to an action packed year for Luchatistas in 2012 thanks thank you thank you gentlemen thank you for Lingua Musica I'm Joe Kendrick 